To some, Patrice Lumumba was a true nationalist hero. Others portrayed him as a corrupt opportunist. Either way, Lumumba quickly and lastingly became an emblematic figure of the African struggle for independence. Few can deny his impact on the course of African history. Patrice Emery Lumumba was born on July 2, 1925, in the village of Onolua in the Congolese province of Kasai. A former postal worker in the Belgian Congo, he became involved in politics after joining a local branch of the Belgian Liberal Party. Quickly realizing that he was prevented as a Congolese to obtain support to challenge colonial powers, he proceeded to fund some of his activities with money from the postal office. In his mind, these public funds rightfully belong to the people and should therefore be allocated to their emancipation. Following his return from a study tour in Belgium organized by the Liberal Party, the colonial authority charged him with embezzlement. While the charges could somewhat be justified, they also allow the authorities to silence his well-founded criticism of colonial racism. Lumumba served four months in jail, during which he engaged in a deep reflection on the state and the future of his beloved Congo. After his release, Lumumba settled down in Leopoldville, where from 1957 on, he launched himself into the political struggle. Joining up forces with Joseph Ileo and Joseph Ngalula, he took the leadership of the Mouvement National Congolais, the MNC, in October 1958. The MNC was the first Congolese political group which openly rejected both Belgian paternalism and internal tribalism. Il nous faut des actes concrets. Les peuples congolais désirent une date précise pour l'indépendance du Congo. They advocated for immediate and total independence and demanded that Congo's vast mineral wealth benefit the Congolese people first. Lumumba and the MNC's declaration came as a shock for the Belgian public opinion. To them, Congo's ethnic differences were problematic and the country will need to rely on their proposed 30-year plan to achieve independence. Two years later, the MNC won the first democratic election they earned the right to form a government with Lumumba as the Prime Minister. The ceremonial position of President was occupied by Joseph Kassavubu, a more moderate leader. On June 30, 1960, amid Independence Day celebrations, the Belgian King Baudouin opened proceeding by praising the murderous regime of his great-uncle, King Leopold II. Highlighting the supposed benefit of colonialism, he warned the Congolese against hasty reforms. Predictably, a rather meek Kasavubu thanked the king. Lumumba, however, felt compelled to respond to the king's remarks. He was not scheduled to speak, but he rose to address the audience. His speech placed the struggle for independence at the forefront and reminded of the injustices, oppression, and exploitation brought about by the colonizers. <laughs> Nos blessures sont trop fraîches et trop douloureuses encore pour que nous puissions les chasser de notre mémoire. Congolese congressmen and those listening by radio broke out in applause. Lumumba's speech was empowering and necessary. As expected, the speech was not well received by the Belgium dignitaries nor by the CIA. Western journalists and multinational mining companies condemned it as well. While Lumumba was attempting to stabilize the nation, Moïse Chombe, leader of the Katangese party Konakat, was distancing himself from the central government. And on July 11, 1960, Chombe declared the province of Katanga's independence. He designated Elizabethville as its capital and appointed himself president. Seeing an opportunity to leverage divisions, the Belgium government lent military support to Katanga and ordered its civil servants in the region to remain in their posts. Hoping to get support in maintaining his government's serenity, 
Lumumba sought help with the United States and the United Nations, but was ignored. And in an attempt to put pressure on the American government, he called the Soviet leader, Nikita Khrushchev, for assistance. This was seen and used by the Belgians as evidence of his radicalism. Joseph Mobutu, former journalist, turned head of the army, then became a key accomplice to the Western powers. Working within Lumumba's circle, he helped incite rebellion in the ranks and stir up unrest, notably by exploiting attacks on white residents and creating an economic crisis. The CIA considered poisoning the Congolese Prime Minister, but eventually settled on working with local political opponents and Belgian agents to eliminate him. Mobutu was instrumental in achieving this goal. His army eventually captured Lumumba. He was flown to Katanga, where he was tortured and executed. In February 2002, following a testimony from a government-mandated commission that condemned Belgium for their complicity and responsibility in Lumumba's assassination, the Belgium government issued an apology. Les insultes, les coups que nous devions subir au matin, midi et soir, parce que nous étions des nègres, qui oubliera qu'un noir, on disait tout.